Okay. Quickly then, and I apologize because we have such a great speaker today. So we have David Brooks joining us today. Real quick, he's the gratitude guy. He has been a speaker, a speaker, a speaker, teacher, life coach, best-selling author for 25 years. He's a former formal Nordstrom sales or store manager, and has a man has managed the corporate world for over 30 years. His published books include the Broker Daily Gratitude Journal, Happiness Starts with Gratitude, and Gratitude Nuggets to Chew On. He was featured on New Day with Margaret Larson, QTV, and Chat with Women on a radio program with over 450 gratitude videos posted on YouTube. Thousands have seen his work and message. He is now considered a leading authority on gratitude and how living a life of gratitude can improve your life. So this will be a fun one. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Misha. <laughs> Thank you, Misha, and thank you, Isaac, for inviting me. I am a member of Seattle 4. Um, I'm also fortunate enough to do one or two or maybe three of these talks every week. So it's something I wanted to do my entire life is to be a speaker. But let me start out because I'm very punctual and like we're going to end up right at one. And I normally go about a half hour. So I'm going to kind of do a little condensed version here today. But let me start out with a question here. How many people here by show of hands have suffered a significant personal loss in your life? About 90%. So I get to talk to schools. I go down into junior highs and I go to rest homes. So I go everywhere from 17, 16, 17 to 90, 95. And it's quite a contrast. Now, as people get older, the hands tend to go more towards 80 or 90%. But almost every group I talk to, at least half the people raise their hand. And I want to tell you very quickly about the significant personal loss in my life. It was September 29th, 1998. It was a Tuesday. I woke up in bed and I looked over and Dana, my wife, wasn't there. I thought, that's strange. I wonder where Dana is. And just then, Connor comes walking in. My four-year-old, where's mommy? I don't know. Let's see if we can find her. So we walk out and we go down the hallway. Kyle, my 14-year-old, same question. We don't know. So we walk down and we look downstairs. And here's Dana down in front of the washer and dryer, all crumpled over. And it doesn't look good. So we go running down there and I turn her over. There's stuff coming out of her mouth and Connor starts crying. And, and I said, Kyle, go call the police. Go call the fire. Call everybody. And within a matter of minutes... There was probably 25 or 30 people in our house. Fire, rescue, police, everything. And they had, they had her out on the floor. They had those paddles and those big tubes and wires and everything. Most surrealistic thing I'd ever been through in my life. And what I noticed about it, and again, for those of you, and I love doing these talks, but now I'm almost getting more something I enjoy, the people that come up and talk to me afterwards and tell me some of their stories that they don't want to tell in front of the group or, or talk about unless it's just one-to-one. -one. But anybody that's gone through something like that will experience this, and that is time loses all measure. And I didn't know how much time had gone by, and I'm just trying to console Connor and myself and what has gone wrong with Dana. This short fire person comes over to me and says, Mr. Brook, we've been working on your wife for an hour and a half. We still don't have a heartbeat. Do you want us to continue? And I just sat there. And even when you're in shock, the brain still works a little bit. I thought, 90 minutes. And I said, no, you can stop. And she was dead. She was 38 years old. As Misha mentioned in the uh, intro, I worked at Nordstrom for a long time. I was a store manager. I had met Dana there. Wonderful, wonderful person. What made it so challenging for me, she was 38, as I mentioned, but that wasn't the first person I lost. Isaac mentioned he's an attorney. My father was a very prominent attorney in Seattle. I watched him in court many times. He committed suicide. My mom had died of cancer. Two friends died the night we graduated from Queen Anne High School, which is no longer. Fraternity brothers, it just went on and on and on. And at some point, I thought, you know what, I, I'm going to have to figure out how to deal with this. And within a couple of days after Dana died, I walked up on this deck we had. We lived by Green Lake. And I just remember pinching myself and thinking, gosh, I'm just flesh and bone. I'm just another person trying to get through life. And for the first time in my life, I understood why people killed themselves. I got it. Because it just, it's just too much pain. We didn't live far from the Aurora Bridge. It wouldn't have been that hard to just walk over there, just step over. But within about five minutes, I made a decision I'm not going to do that. Connor, as I mentioned, is four. Kyle's 14. Now they've lost their mother. What should I go do? Go kill myself? I've got to raise these boys. And I made that decision not to do it. But what I thought about is a lot of this depends on how you look at something. It really is. And just watching everybody here and Dawn and Dan and 
let me see Bob and Skip and John and just paying attention to people today. It's all about your attitude. Great attitude. That's what I love about Rotary. But I'd like you to all stand up, if you would, just for a second to just do a little brief exercise. Take your right hand and start turning it a clockwise manner. Now, if anybody's uncertain, there's a clock right there because we all, we're a digital age now. But keep turning it clockwise. Keep Feel that nice stretch after our great lunch. Thank you. And now start bringing it down. Keep it going clockwise. Just keep bringing it down slowly to your eyes, to your chin, to your chest into your waist. Now what direction is it going? Counterclockwise. Counter thank you, Misha. Counterclockwise, so you can sit down, thank you. <laughs> Audience participation piece. Now it's going counterclockwise. I have PhD friends of mine that have seen me speak. What's the story on that circle thing? Do people like change midway? Like, aren't you a PhD? Didn't you like study? It, it, it just depends if you look at it from above or below. It's my way of saying something other than the glass is half full. It depends on how you look at it. So I started realizing this as we kept going through this. We lost our house. We lost everything because Dana was addicted to painkillers. Vicodin, Oxycontin, all this kind of thing. So I realized that there was going to be some things I was going to have to come up with that kind of saved my life. I really felt that way and I'd lost so many people. And of the 20 or 25 people that I lost, I'd say half of them were of their own hand. Prescription, booze, suicide. It's ridiculous. I know this life is challenging, but there's ways to get around it. And there's ways to deal with it. And I, one of the real things I really discovered, I discovered gratitude, ended up doing a gratitude journal, which I'll talk about in a second. But I also realized it takes as long as it takes, and you cannot, and this was what, Don? Don had the, the comments that, is it Bob that had those written down? Bill, thank you. Phenomenal comments. Never compare your inside to somebody else's outside. There's all sorts of things. It's nobody's business. It's not, it's, your, it's not your business what somebody else thinks of you. Phenomenal line. We have, and I get to go do commencement speeches and I tell these kids, it's your journey. Don't look on either side. Figure out what your journey and your path is going to be. But there's got to be tools that can help you. And when I realized that it takes as long as it takes, I just turned 64. And I know some of you are like, gosh, he doesn't look a day over 63. <laughs> but, but it's gone by fast. But I survived. And I survived all of this because I figured out a couple of key principles. And one of them was embracing gratitude. It takes as long as it takes, as I just said. You can't ever give up. Winston Churchill. And there's all these examples. I've done some churches and I'll do the, I don't like PowerPoint, but I put the big pictures up. And I put a picture of Colonel Sanders, 63, when he started KFC. For those of us, Skip was talking about taking a trip with his wife, and we all have these different plans. I have a much different plan than I thought I was going to be at 64. I thought he'd be going down to Australia and taking four and six week trips when he was talking about that, which is so cool. But we have these individual paths that we're on, but you need tools along the way. And there's just a lot of them that kill people. And I've watched so many people with, when I talk about like booze and things like this, it's just amazing how many people have gone because they couldn't cope. So when I realized, another thing is embrace gratitude. It takes as long as it takes. Don't ever give up. But also, get rid of the junk in your brain. you got to make room for gratitude. It's like cleaning house. And I'm going to ask you, when you go out today, get in your car. Notice how big this windshield is. It's about two feet deep, and it's about five feet wide. And then notice how big the rearview mirror is. It's probably about 100 to 1 or 200 to 1, some <laughs> relative piece like that. But keep that in mind. Now, if you see flashing blue lights here, you know, you got to pull over. You don't want to get in trouble. But mostly, focus on what's in front of you. And so it's just so important when I managed all these people, raising children. I've got the two boys, as I mentioned, and managing groups up to four or 500 employees at a big Nordstrom. It's the same concept. They follow the example that you set. They'll do what you do, not what you say. They'll do what you do. So I started thinking as I'm raising these guys, I'm going to have to get some things that are going to help. And so this buddy of mine says to me one day, you know, you're just a mess. I said, well, Bob, you know, my wife died. And you know about everybody else has passed on. You need to get a gratitude journal. And so now who's ever heard of a gratitude journal? Anybody? A couple. Nisha, Bob, a couple others. Well, I hadn't. So I got a gratitude journal and I started writing in it. And I started noticing just these amazing things happening. And it was four to five minutes a day. That's all it is. And again, as I'd watched so many people that had passed on, 
that I thought, I'm going to have to figure out something like this and then end up making my own. And what I did on this, and I sell these, and I sell some other books I've written, but I don't even care. You can buy them. It's fine. But it's get a spiral notebook. It doesn't matter to me, but this is a healthy coping mechanism that can transform and change your life by in four to five minutes a day because it makes you focus on everything you have in your life versus what you don't have. And all you got to do is watch TV and read, and I know the media gets blamed for a lot of things, but everybody focuses on what we don't have. He's got a bigger boy. I got these fraternity brothers, and then one buys two feet longer, another two feet longer. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. And then I watch the Philip Seymour Hoffmans and Mick Jagger's girlfriend and these different people that seem to have it all. That doesn't work for them. So what I offer is this is an alternative. And normally I do a little exercise, and I'm not going to do it today because I don't have enough time. But one of the things is your daily number. And it says right here, gratitude today, the day, the date, this is March 26th. And then your daily number, 10 is the best day of your life, and 1 is maybe a tough day. And every day I give sign myself a number. I always write in the course every day. I, I came across on the ferry because I live in Seattle. And this is actually my journal. And I write, it takes five minutes every single day. And people will come up afterwards and they'll go, is this your journal? And then they'll see it and they go, oh, you write in it every day. Did you hear the presentation? Were you like listening? When I was, of course I do every day. <laughs> I have to set a good example. We just finished talking about that. But I want to tell you what happened one day. And this is, what, this is what makes it so challenging for me is not only had all that happened to me, but my mother was manic depressive. And she, when I was at high school and then into college, she would call me and go, David, and she'd take pills and she'd shake these pills by the phone. She goes, I have these sleeping pills. I'm going to take these if you don't come and see me right now. So I'd have to leave and we lived in Magnolia and I'd have to go from the bookstore where I worked at the University of Washington to go see her. But I think I got a piece of that. And so every so often I've had days when it's been a challenge. Well, I'm not taking a pill. I can't. It killed so many people. It killed Dana. And I know there's antidepressants and all these things. People go, God, you don't look like you're depressed. I go, well, what do you want me to walk in, look like crap, and be crying in the corner? I mean, where's the speaker? Oh, I see there. He's sent him over there. He looks upset. Well, what am I supposed to do? So... I decided that the journal and exercise and all these different things would help. But I woke up this day and I was a two. I was so down, I couldn't believe it. And I had to do a talk at the Burlington Chamber up north of Seattle. So I got my journal. I didn't even take a shower. I went down to the uh, Starbucks and I wrote in my journal. It bumped me up to about a four or five. So I felt better. Again, it's five or six minutes. And when I normally do the exercise, I don't tell people what to write, but it's typically my health and my friends and my family and my kids. These things we just, I, I do a video, as Misha said, I do a video every single day on YouTube. It's always something new and people go, well, how do you keep coming up with a new subject? Really? Gratitude? It's like a finite list? <laughs> what happened to Brooke? He's at Starbucks staring at the wall. He's run out of ideas. <laughs> And, and so when I thought about it, I thought, let me go do this thing and I'll feel better. So it was neat. It was about 200 people. And after it's done, people come up and they, they want to buy the books and sign it and all this kind of cool stuff. And this gal comes up. A lot of people get really emotional. She's crying. And she says, can I give you a hug? And I said, yeah. And she gives me a hug. She says, my name is Janice. And she said, I said, she says, a couple of the stories you talked about. It was a little longer presentation, maybe 45 minutes. But you just changed my life. And I said, well, you know, Janice, I don't think I really changed your life. I just think maybe I gave you a tool or some tools to work with. But nonetheless, she says, well, thank you so much and very emotional. And so I go out and get in the car and I realized I was a nine and a half then. I had gone from a two to a four to a five to a nine and a half. I didn't take one pill, snort some powder, drink a beer, do anything else that has killed so many people that I know. And that is the power of a gratitude journal. And when I get to do radio every once in a while, the radio person always says, what's your, what's your final comment for the listeners today? I go, just try a gratitude journal. So here's what I'd like you to consider. Just There's sort of these five things. Embracing gratitude is kind of the first module. And I do workshops for the state and different things for employees and people that don't have as good of attitude, number one. Number two, it takes as long as it takes. Don't ever, please don't ever give up. It always gets better. The thing that makes me so irritated about my father, you've heard this before, it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. This thing will help you get better. 
Number three, make room for it. Get rid of that crap. Get the junk out of your brain. Young kids, I talk about this all the time. We do things. We drive over stuff. Back to the, the uh, windshield, the rear view mirror. And then we pick it up, put it in front of it, and drive over it again. And one of the things I've noticed is ex-spouses. Oh, my goodness. That ex-husband of mine, blah, 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 blah. I go, when did you get divorced? Ten years ago? Okay, I, I think it's time to move on. It's probably your life. And if you can, get a gratitude journal. I don't care if you get a spiral or whatever. But the last thing that I would offer is sharing gratitude. Because once you get something, you want to share it. So here's what I want to do very briefly. I'm going to give you guys 60 seconds. How many people here have a smartphone on them? Pretty much everybody. How many people have used their smartphone while they've watched me talking? That guy gets a book. That's an honest person. <laughs> yeah, this guy's not too bad. Let me check my email. See what he's up to. I'm going to give you 60 seconds. I want you to text, tweet, tell, or telephone somebody in your life and tell them how grateful you are for it. I'm going to give you 60 seconds. Get those smarts. If you don't have one, it's okay. Let me just time this here. You can tell somebody you're sitting next to, Don. You can tell, is it Randy? Are, is it, isn't it Randy? Don? Oh, never mind. You can tell Randy how grateful you are for him. I was in the middle of texting my wife. <laughs> okay, as you're doing that, let me just mention a couple of things about that. So, I get to do big groups. And that's one of my favorite things, the four T's, telephone, text, tweet, or tell somebody how grateful you are. So when there are groups and they're up front like this and it's a big, I can always see a few people actually using it as a telephone. We've gotten so much away from this as a telephone. It's all text and tweet and Facebook and social media and I've been to a million of those things as well. And yet I always hear this happen. There'll be somebody down here. Yeah, uh-huh. Like Dawn, I'm, I just want to, you're my, I want to tell you how grateful I am for you. Mm -hmm. How's it going? Yeah, just like that. And, uh, and then I heard this guy go, I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call and tell you that. <laughs> You're ruining it. Gosh. But the reason I feel so, so good job. What's your name? Walt. Walt. Good job, Walt. <coughs> the reason I feel so strongly about when you get something you're excited about, I, I run those fancy Nordstrom stores. I ran Lowe's Home Improvement. Nothing can compare to what I get to do now. If I affect one life today, that's one more that it was affected yesterday. But the sharing piece is so powerful. And you think about things in your life you didn't get to share. And I remember I never did drugs. I never smoked dope and any of that crap. And I watched it kill all these people. But I was an adrenaline junkie. And I learned how to fly. And I jumped out of airplanes and bungee jumped and all that kind of crazy stuff. Well, I once made this appointment for, for, uh, bun or for uh, skydiving. Seven fraternity brothers for a Saturday. So on Monday, it's down to five. And then Wednesday, there's about three. And then Friday, I get a couple of calls. Hey, Dave, <coughs> I have a sore throat. I, I don't think I'm going to make it tomorrow. So I march myself proudly into Issaquah skydiving, and I go, hi, Brooke, party of eight. We got the reservation. He looks at me great. He says, uh, where's your friends? Uh, I don't have any. And I was all by myself. But I went ahead and did it, and I got the pictures and everything, but I didn't get to share it with anybody. And when you really share, if you want to help yourself, help other people. What is Rotary? Service above self. If you want to help other people, help yourself. Share it. Share that gratitude. I will just tell you, I ask people, gratitude, a gratitude journal. It can transform a life. It can change a life. And in my case, I think it saved my life. I truly believe I wouldn't be here without that. And it can save yours too. Thank you so much. Sit down. Thank you so much for sharing with us and also so in your honor for speaking oh, with fantastic. us. Oh, fantastic. Yes, we made a donation then uh, for the Wheelchair Foundation in your name. Fantastic. Thank yes. you. So thank you so thank much. You. And I'm sorry we didn't have more time to hear more stories. That's okay. I had a couple extras, but let me just mention one last thing too. I do have the journals. I do have books and so forth, but I've also learned not to take it too seriously. I typically give away a book and I could see I wasn't going to have enough time and I collect cards and I got my little tickets and everything and give away a book. But even that has its risk because about a month ago I did one and it was like, okay, Misha Smith or something like this. And the person, they're all clapping and she comes up front and I go, here you go. There's a book for you. She goes, great. Oh, good job, Sally. Great. And I looked at her from the podium and I went, now, if you'd like later, I'll sign that for you. She goes, that's okay. <laughs> so I just went, okay, that's fine. No signature. Thanks a lot. <laughs> 
the leadership kits out because we just introduced um, gratitude journals to the leadership kits out 